Hey, this is Max. I am back with another CSR2 video. Thanks to the Mysterious Stranger, I have access to a ASC Camaro that has all Stage 6 infusions. So I'm going to give you the lowdown on this car because it's coming up next season as the Prestige Cup car. Uh, it is a 5-star Tier 4. Must be good, right? Well, eh, not really. Well, let me tell you why. The regular 5-star Camaro Z28 does about a 12-2 maxed. And this car does about a 12.2 max. In fact, before you get to stage sixes, this car is really, really slow. 14.2. Yeesh. I haven't seen a car this slow in a while. But hey, you know, for a brand new ASC, which is a, supposedly a tuner Camaro Z28, I really thought natural motion would give us something a little more competitive to the Nissan Silvia. And possibly the NSX, but instead we get a car that's basically retuned to perform almost exactly as slow as the five star Z28 from two years ago. Hmm. So why would I want this car? Well, not a whole lot of reasons there other than the fact that it can hit 260 miles per hour and therefore could be useful in Tempest three but is it a go-to car certainly not it's too slow to be that competitive and other than the speed trap it doesn't do well in the zero to 60 and zero to 100 so this is one of those if you get this car if you max it if 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 it may be useful for something but it's not very useful so would i take this car over say the up and coming future lb nsx i don't think so I will pull this car next season just to do what I need to do for points, but I am not counting on using this car much after that. With full stage sixes, this car barely gets 700 EVO points, which means it also will not make a lot of RP points in live. Just generally a useless, well, I shouldn't say useless, useful, semi-useful car for any garage. Considering it's a five-star and how many keys it's likely to take just to pull the thing, I'm not looking forward to even trying to build it that much because, well, you're spending tons of resources on something that's really not that great. Okay, all my complaints aside, let's get into the stage six effects of this car. Let's start with nitrous. Nitrous is always big for most cars. Uh, any car that has, you know, high acceleration or takes off quick but kind of runs out of steam. Nitrous comes to the rescue. So this is an important stage six for most cars. Not all cars. Cars like the um, F F12, not F12, I'm sorry, the super fast uh, and some other really fast car like the LB Aventador doesn't care about nitrous that much, but this car certainly should. So let's put nitrous where we get pretty much the highest benefits, which seems to be right around 6.0. I can tweak this a little bit to see if I can get a little higher than 369 now but more grip my help yep so as you power it into stage sixes the grip situation changes you're gonna need more grip now more grip just makes the car faster but it certainly doesn't help its mile per hour so looking here 13.8 from a 14 something we are down about what four and a half tenths almost five tenths because it was about a 14 to three before but it's only 213 miles per hour. However, interestingly, this car could hit, even at this stage, well over 214. If you run it the right way, it can easily do more. But you will be pushing it with nitrous. Notice the mile per hour here doesn't show it being any better, but you can certainly push it into the 230s easily with just running the nitrous late. You're gonna run really slow, but I'm just showing you that stage six nitrous will help with the mile per hour quite a bit. So let's take a look, see how much it helps. Quick run here. What I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna worry about getting the best time. I'm just trying to show you a quick mile per hour thing. Okay, so we're just gonna slowly put here and push the mile per hour. Now you have quite a bit of yeah, 222 okay from a 200 and what looks like with a 215 or 19 uh, dyno 214 now and that's without 
tweaking the tires. Obviously, if I put the tires here, it's going to go much higher. So that's the thing about this car is that once you're on nitrous, it'll do quite a bit more than what it's mile per hour saying on the dyno. Okay, so that was nitrous. Pretty big for this car. Pretty important. And certainly one of the key stage sixes for getting higher mile per hours. And that's really all this car is going to be focused on. If I get a hold of it on my newer account, this is what it would be used for. However, I think if I get the LB and SX, I certainly would forego this car altogether for the purpose of uh, running Tempest 3. Okay, so the next one up is body. Uh, body generally is pretty useful, but not as much for tier 4s as it is for many tier 5s. Let's see what it does. I suspect it'll do something, but it's probably not going to be as useful as nitrous. Right, again, playing with the tire here. That, oh, looks like a little bit less grip helps when it's body. Hmm. Let's see where we're at. 256. And that gives us a time of 14.0 from 14.2. So about a two tenths drop from pure stage five. Certainly not as strong as nitrous not extremely terrible either so body is useful about a two two and a half two point three zero point two three i should say drop from st stage five only times okay let's move on to tire now this car being a bit of a slow accelerating car but needs some grip to really go fast it's hard to say what tire will do uh, i suspect it'll affect the overall tune and it looks like you need a little bit less grip without other uh, power-ups. But let's see if how it works out. Let's see. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm kind of stuck at about 298. Fine-tuning probably you could squeeze out a little bit. 13,966. A little bit better than body, but marginally so. Maybe only by about four hundredths. Not that impressive, but it is a two tenths drop. So keep in, keep that in mind that you have almost five tenths from nitrous. Now you have two two tenths from each body and tire. So that's almost right there, a full second drop. Okay, let's move on to trends. Let's look at the number changes. Quite a few PP points and quite a few evil points. Trans is gonna be pretty effective. Probably not as much as body. We don't know yet. Need to tune. But that is certainly good numbers looking at the changes there. Can we get more points? More grip? Less grip? Nope. So this is probably what it's going to end up at. 13.7 though, that's quick. That's actually better than nitrous if I recall correctly. So trans is pretty big. That is definitely a, about a 5 tenths drop as well. So trans and nitrous should give you a full second drop, putting you into the 13th or very close to it. Add, that, add on body and also tire, you should be somewhere in the 12.7, 12.6 range. So trans and nitrous is going to be important. It looks like engine will not have a, well, maybe not too bad. Let's see what engine does. May not be as big as, certainly not as big as nitrous, but let's see if it falls into third place or it still falls under the effects from the other two, tire and body. More power, less power. Mm, 322 seems to be about where we need to be. 14.099. Nope. It's a little bit slower than body and therefore currently sitting at fourth place. Turbo and intake almost always will not do a whole lot. So I'm not holding out a lot of hope. Either one will surprise me here. Uh, you have the big four, which is nitrous, body, tire, and trans, followed by a very equivalent engine. So the big five would be these guys. And that would leave the last two to be only marginally useful because engine also dropped about 210. So if we're looking at 12.6, we're down to 12.4. So you're talking about the difference between 12.4 and 12.23 or 26 dyno, that's less than 210. So turbo and intake should each give us probably less than a 10th or right around the 10th drop. 
let's see if I'm uh, right in my estimates here. Now, the tune is kind of stuck right around this, right? It doesn't seem to do a lot better than what this is. 14.114 from a 14.23. So it's about a tenth drop for turbo. So I'm, I'm kind of on target here. It's very close to a tenth. That If this is over a tenth, that means intake must be under a tenth or almost a tenth. Let's see what intake does. But so far, obviously, turbo and intake is going to be the bottom two. This car is pretty consistent to what we normally see. Nothing surprising here. The big ones are the ones that you expect to be the big ones, and the little ones are the ones you expect to be little ones. Let's take a look here again. Some minor tweaking. Again, not a very tunable car to get more out of it. Notice it's just kind of stuck at this point. 14.076. Let me think about that. That's actually better than turbo. Okay, so I am su slightly surprised. It's a little over, um, I would say, about 1.1 1 .1 tenth and 600 almost, uh, which is actually better. So turbo is the worst, believe it or not. Intake actually beats it this time. All right, so they threw a little bit of a surprise in there for us. Not a great one, but it is what it is. All right, let's talk about possibility of where the Prestige Cup ends up at. With new cars like this, natural motion traditionally, and they can always change, but traditionally have been a little bit easier on us. This season's GTO was a brutal prestige cup, needing, needing basically a near max car. I certainly don't believe natural motion would be so mean as to do that with a brand new five star car with hard to get fusions, but can't put it above them. Generally speaking, what I find is if you put the top four or five stage sixes in, you pretty much know where the PC Cup will end up being. So I'm going to put the big four in and tune it and see where the car runs. And that might give us a ballpark of where you may end up with the Prestige Cup. Is it likely they're going to make it possible to beat it with just three stage sixes? Maybe. I'm not particularly optimistic, though. Based on past history, I would say you need the big four generally to beat PC Cups, with a few minor exceptions, where one stage six was so outstanding that combine that with just one or two other ones get you through. 12.8. So 12.8 is with the big four plus full fusion. Let's say Natural Motion says, OK, I'm going to let you have it at the big four and not full fusion. That would probably put us right around 13. So my estimate for the PC Cup, if natural motion is not too mean, would be somewhere between 13.2 and 12.8. Anything less than 12.8, they're going to make a lot of people struggle. Anything over 13.2 may come on the side of easy, okay? But not certainly not too easy because let's say you take these off, you leave the big two, and you throw in the little two here. That would put you right around 13.2, 13.3, if my estimates are correct, which makes it hard to hit 13.2 if you don't have the right stage sixes. And that's with the two big ones. So if you have that, you can get 13. All right, I'm wrong, 13.0. So somewhere between 13.0, 13.2 would be a pretty fair place for Prestige Cup. And that's with the big boys. What if you don't have the big boys? You don't have nitrous and you don't have trans. Well, I think you're going to be in trouble is what you're going to be in. Uh, you may not finish the PC Cup, depending on where they set it. Let's take a look at that combination real quick. Take out Nitrous and Trans, uh, which by itself drops almost a second. That puts you already at slower than 13.2. Even if you have all the other ones, it's questionable whether you can even hit 13.2. Certainly 13.0 should be very difficult, but I may be wrong again. So let's take a look going to tune it this time because I changed the nitrous off. Um, that's going to affect the tune quite a bit because you have to redo nitrous. So nitrous with this usually goes best around 4.0, 3.9. A little more aggressive gearing, a little bit less aggressive gearing. What do we got? All right. Play with the tire a little bit. No, so tire's about where it is. 
13.254. So with the other five stage sixes and full fusion, you're talking about 13.254. With the big ones, you only need four to hit 13 flat. So it could be as slow as a 13.4 or three something for Prestige Cup, and it still would be pretty tough um, for people that are new, doesn't have as many fusions. If if we're really talking about a slower PC cup, maybe 13.5, 13.6, that would be nice. And that means you could reach it with weaker stage sixes and missing a bunch of fusions. I would certainly hope they would do that for us, but I'm not holding my breath. 13.2, 13.3, that's my guesstimate of where we will end up at. Maybe even 13.0, but that's kind of tough. So hopefully not. All right. So this car is not very good on acceleration runs, okay? Let's take a look at the 0 to 60, 0 to 100 here. Kind of slow, and that's with most of the stage 6s. Even with full stage 6, it's barely a 12-2 car, and it still runs in the 3s for 0 to 100 and 2-something in 0 to 60. So it's not a sprint car. Don't start thinking you're going to use this for Tempest just because it's a 5-star. I would say for Tempest 1 and 2, the regular Camaro Z28 5-star would be better. For Tempest 3, the only saving grace for this car is the ability to hit 260 miles per hour. And if you save this car, assuming it's fully maxed, and use it for that purpose, that's what you would use it for. Personally, I would say skip it. Wait for the LBNSX, which is coming up as a PC car in the near future. And put your resources into that car instead of this one. That one is infinitely better and much more tunable and much more useful all around. So beating Dino, I haven't played with this car too much. My gut feeling is if it beats Dino, it'll only be by a little bit through proper driving, not necessarily by tuning. Um, didn't try things like this yet, but you know, this kind of tuning may get it to beat Dino. I certainly hope you have another Chevy available for the um, uh, supply cups because I certainly wouldn't want to have to use this thing for it. But if you absolutely don't have another Chevy and you have to do supply cups with this, well, you know, it may be tougher. If it can be dyno, it wouldn't be that big a deal. I'm just not sure if it's capable of doing that. Um, let's find out if it does, in fact, be dyno or not with a 2.0 dyno tube. Hmm, there's possibility here. Ah, no. So, it beats Dino slightly. Without fine-tuning and playing with it more, I can't tell you too much. Um, but it doesn't look that optimistic at the moment, okay? Because it's barely off Dino. That means if you run it for Supply Cup, it won't be that great. So, what's my ultimate conclusion on this car? Well, it's only about as good as a... 5-star Camaro Z28, regular 5-star Camaro Z28, which is not saying much because that's not a very good car. It's slow. It barely runs 12 twos. It's able to hit 260 miles per hour being its only benefit, but it falls on its face for acceleration runs. What, are you, what should you do with this car? Well, you should get it because you need it for the PC cup for the points. Are you... Should you put all your bronze keys and silver keys and pull 10 of these just to get it maxed? Personally, I think it's a total waste of your resources. Wait and wait for the LBNSX that's coming. That is a much better investment. Now, knowing what I know about this car, I am not looking forward to next season all that much as far as pulling the PC car is concerned. Also, know that being a five-star, this car could be a real pain to pull next season Get your 750 silver keys saved up so you're ready to go. If you have any thoughts, comments, or questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. Let me know your thoughts. I am always open to ideas, suggestions, and questions. Please subscribe to the channel so you can get updates as I do these Stage 6 videos. With access to these cars and knowing that it's going to be an LBNSX next season following this, um, I think we should be able to do a pretty good stage six video come that time. And as always, I want to thank you guys for watching my videos and I'll catch you next time.